Oh, there's one more tiny whisk, you guys. So that's a total of four tiny whisks in my kit, just so you know. I'm like slightly embarrassed I have so many tiny whisks in my kit, but I don't care. I love it. Hey everybody, I'm Rashawn from Foodstyles Versus, and I am working from home. So I'm gonna unpack all the tools I have in my food stylist kit and show you guys every single one. First things first, is my scissors. These are craft scissors. They're multifunctional. These are great for all kinds of things and I like how small they are. And then I have these really small trimming scissors for all those tight jobs that you need something smaller than your craft scissors for. An X-Acto knife. I used this in my food styles versus pie video when I was cutting the pie slice out. The X-Acto knife is like perfect for those kind of jobs. And it's pink. Palette knife, offset palette knife, and then this is just a regular spreading spatula palette knife. Always good to have both of those. This is a sauce spoon. So this is actually for true culinary plating where you wanna put like just dollops of sauce in places, it comes out of the little spout there. Tweezers, these are straight tweezers. I don't use these very often. I really prefer my offset tweezers. These are just easier to manipulate with the food than something like this. You can like get in there and see how it, it just like, it just fits better. Melon baller, because you never know when you're gonna need to make melon balls or take the core out of something. So this is a channel zester. So I thought I would show you guys what a channel zester does. Most of the time this is used for styling cocktails because it makes a really great zest curl. I'm gonna go get a lemon and see if that works better. So we have a really long strand of zest. And then we're gonna take it and I'm just gonna use my finger because that's what I have. But normally I'd wrap it around like the handle of a wooden spoon or something like that. And you wanna get it into like a really tight spiral. And then you've got like a really cute garnish for a cocktail. Plastic straws can be used for drinking out of a cocktail glass when it's too full and you need to put more liquid in there, blowing on ice cream to melt it faster. Basically, these things just have all kinds of uses and they come in really handy. Tiny whisk, just in case. If anything, they're just really cute, right? Tea pins. I used tea pins in my food sauce versus episode on the roasted chicken. I used it to tack down the skin before I roasted it so that the skin didn't shrink up onto the chicken when I cooked it. Tea pins really come in handy for like protein manipulation and that sort of thing. Multi-purpose tools for sure. Shoe polish. I'm sure most of you know what this is for. I used this on the Food Sauce versus Whopper episode where I used the shoe polish to paint grill marks on the burger. I do not use shoe polish very often. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the last time I used this shoe polish was for that. But a food stylist never knows what they're going to need. So it's always great to have all kinds of things in your kit as a resource just in case. These are tiny torches. They're really awesome. And they really come in handy for toasting meringue, marshmallows. I love fire, so whatever. I'm sure you guys are well acquainted with my mama torch here. So this is the big guy. These two things come separate. So this is butane fuel and then the torch that goes on top. I used this most recently in my working from home episode I did on making tacos. I used my torch to char my tortillas. Polygrip or polydent or denture cream. I used this in my food styles versus chipotle episode and it helped me adhere the tortilla to itself. So what denture cream does is it activates with liquid or moisture or water. So it's really great to use on things that already have liquid, which most food does. So that's why it's really great to use with food. I have a tiny sifter, mostly used for dusting 
powdered sugar or cocoa powder or having to like sprinkle dry ice on things, which I did in my food sauce versus Sunday episode. This is a dentist tool. I don't know what you call this in like real life, like a poker. This is also used for just like moving food around or if I have to like get something off the plate. I mean, obviously I would use my tweezers pretty often for that, um, but I have it just in case I need it. I have a, a kit knife just in case. Multiple brushes, lots of brushes, lots of different sizes of brushes. I have my fan brushes here. It's like a really fine bristle and it covers a wide surface area for actually brushing things onto food. Just a normal pastry brush. Great for pastry purposes, obviously. This is probably one of my favorite brushes. It's just a really great long handle. The bristles are like, are medium fine. Then I have uh, just another like wide brush. I can tell that I've used this one for in like oil. And then just like all these other brushes that I would use for various food styling activities. Tiny tongs, aren't they cute? It goes with my tiny whisk. Just a, like a just in case thing. You just never know. And it fits in your, in your kit. So these are plastic wedges. So these are used to prop up food or like a plate or a glass or something like that. Something that just needs to be lifted or supported. I have some like small, skewers i guess these would be kind of be like cocktail skewers um i use these primarily for baking and then i have a whole bunch of spoons in lots of different sizes so i've got like really big spoons medium sized spoons slotted spoon tiny spoons are super important you always are going to have something that needs just like a little bit of something i love this spoon in particular because of the shape of the spoon how it gets pointy at the top um, that means you have like a lot of control when using this spoon with like sauces and drizzling and stuff like that. Okay, all the pockets are empty. So now we're gonna go inside of the bag. So the first thing that's kind of sticking out over here is a squeeze bottle. Squeeze bottles are great. You don't use them like all that often, but they're great for adding dressing onto a salad. Just use it like you can just put oil in there. This is my refillable glass spray bottle. I only keep water in this spray bottle. If you saw my Food Sauce versus Holiday Dinner episode, I showed you guys how I use water spritzing on food. You can also use it to spritz like a prop glass and make it look like it has condensation on it and stuff like that. So it's very versatile, very useful. I have long bamboo skewers for skewering things primarily. And then I have metal skewers. I use metal skewers for adding char marks to grilled food. What I usually do is I take these metal skewers and I put them over a gas burner, get them really, really hot, and I'll have already grilled the food. And if there's like a char, a grill mark that didn't go all the way through on a piece of like grilled chicken or something like that, and it's it needs to be like elongated or finished, I use my skewer for that sort of thing. A stick lighter, just because, you never know. My heat gun. Heat guns are great. It's almost like having your own broiler with you so you just plug it in it gets hot um, it has a high setting and a low setting and you can use it for browning cheese or if you have food that's like supposed to be hot and it's been on set for too long and it's basically dying and it looks like it's getting cold you can use your heat gun to revive your food when your food's on set you're away from your kitchen so that's where your heat gun really comes in handy two types of caro syrup or corn syrup clear corn syrup can be used for a number of different things it's a glistening agent it makes things look shiny but it's also completely edible it's kind of the same with the dark caro syrup or dark corn syrup except that since it's dark basically it's best to use on meat so like browned meat it also is great if you're caramelizing things and you need something to help like speed up that process it's already brown it already has like that amber golden color so it aids you in the color department but then it also helps makes things glistening and shiny which in turn make them look moist and delicious 
So then we've got fake ice cubes. I know what you're thinking. You would normally have uh, real ice, but you're not gonna use real ice. You're gonna put fake ice in it. Well, that's true. Um, but actually these look really fake. They're like really perfectly square and then they have this like weird like air bubble in the middle. So if I was gonna use fake ice, it would probably be a different quality of fake ice. So this is what I use for patting in a bowl. So say I have a bowl of tomato soup and I'm gonna put breadcrumbs on top or croutons on top of the tomato soup. I would maybe put one or two of these in the bowl of soup underneath the top level of the soup so the breadcrumbs sit on top and they don't sink down. I have two bottles of olive oil, travel size, so they fit in my kit. I have one that's a extra virgin olive oil, and so this is gonna be green and really pretty on salads and stuff like that, something that needs like just a garnish of oil. And then I have classic olive oil, not extra virgin. Um, this has a, a lighter golden color. So this is great for brushing on to foods like cooked proteins and it doesn't add any color. It, it just enhances the color that's already there. I have my jar of black peppercorns to go with my pepper grinder, which I keep in my kit. And it has multiple grind settings on it. Like it goes large to small. So that way I can control the size of the pepper grind that I'm getting. I usually like to do a larger grind for like finishing on food. I have my finishing sea salt, which is great for all kinds of things. It's really pretty on top of food. So if I'm ever just going to add salt and pepper on top of a plate or meat when I'm finished plating, um, it's probably gonna be this sea salt, this flaky sea salt so that you can see it really well. Fruit Fresh. This is that powdered citric acid product that I talk about a lot. There's a couple reasons that I like to keep this product in my kit, mostly because it's shelf stable and I don't have to worry about it going bad. And I use this on fresh fruits and vegetables that are gonna turn brown really fast. A small empty spray bottle for other things than water. Pam my cooking spray, my best friend, she's my girl. This is vegetable glycerin. So vegetable glycerin, I would mix with water and that spray creates really, really nice droplets. It also makes things shiny, kind of like uh, the clear corn syrup does. This is food-based. So this is also an edible product. Goo Gone. So Goo Gone helps get rid of any sticky adhesive that is left on, a, on something. Like if you take a sticker off of like a plate or a bowl, or if you're removing like a wine label or something like that, the Goo Gone helps with that. This is Kitchen Bouquet. So this is gonna work the same way the Cairo corn syrup is, except it doesn't make anything shiny. I use Kitchen Bouquet on cooked meat to make it more golden and more brown. It's very, very concentrated, so you only have to use a little bit of the time, so like one bottle will last you a really, really long time. This is also like completely edible. This is like something that they sell at the grocery store on the gravy aisle. You use it kind of like a paint, like you would paint it onto food to make the food appear more golden and more brown. This is Angostura bitters, which obviously using cocktails, so you never know. But also I would probably pair these two items together because sometimes this isn't the color that you need for the meat. So if I was doing steak or a, red, a cooked red meat that was really, really brown, I would probably use this directly on that versus chicken, which Angostura bitters is a little bit more orangey um, golden. So I would mix these two together to get the right color for whatever I'm wanting to use the color for. There's just like, like the literally last couple things I'm gonna show you guys. Kit related, butcher's twine, which is really, really important. I think it really comes in handy in so many different ways. So I have this little tackle box. These are called pipettes. It's almost like a turkey baster. These are great for adding liquid. Q-tips help get into those really tight spots where you need to like clean up a little bit of a mess or something like that. Makeup sponges, which I use similarly to the plastic wedges. So these both have the same sort of purpose. And then I just have regular wooden toothpicks. 
which are great for keeping things in place, testing your baked goods and all kinds of stuff. Whew, that was a really in-depth look at all of my stuff. And it definitely makes me realize that I have a lot of things in my kit, but I will say that I can remember an instance where I used every single one of these tools that I have in my bag, which is great, obviously. I hope I did a good job explaining to you guys how I use each of these things. And if you saw anything in the video that you're just like really curious about and I didn't go into depth about it, just let me know, ask me your questions, and I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you're following me on Instagram. My handle is at Rashawn Marie. And please be sure you're subscribed to Food Styles Versus on YouTube so you can stay up to date with all the content that we're uploading, mostly from home right now. But thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for our next episode. Reach out to me if you guys have any questions.